Hi, I'm Michael, and behind the camera is Ellie. We are the bill paying hobbyists, and we're using our hobbies and skill sets to pay off debt and to save up for a down payment on a house. Let's get right to it. Hello, everyone. This week, we are turning a pen for profit. This is a special one for all of you in Florida. So, now call. We got a special care package from Turner's Warehouse, and this is a Junior Hamilton kit. It's a two-part kit. So what that means is it has two tubes. It's gonna have a bottom, that's the part you hold on to. And then this will be a cap that actually screws onto the end of the pen. This will actually go this way in the end here. I'm not gonna push it all the way in. This will be our end cap. This is in a gun metal finish. So this would be like this, and there will be a blank here in the center. So yeah, I forgot one piece. Ooh, very important piece. The clip goes here, and that's gonna go on there. All right, that'll be the top. Then on the part that you write with, this will go in here. This will be the tip, and it screws in here. This is the finial end that goes here. So this would be the part you write with, and this screws on here, and it also will screw on here when you're writing with it. Now it's a little long right now. This pen will not be this long when it's done. Now the special part of this pen is in here. This is from Raptor Resins. So let's open this up so we can see our blank. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na 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 -na. No. Ha! You're not gonna see our blank. It's gonna be a reveal at the end. So we're gonna get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut this blank into two pieces for our tube so that we can get that glued up. I'm gonna put everything away and then we'll go to the band saw. Hey, we're interrupting. Don't forget to smack that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. For this pen kit, we're doing something a little different. I'm using Brad Point bits this time, so I'm going to cut the blank a little bit longer than I normally would. Just in case I have blowout, I still have a viable blank because this is the only one I have. This is the jig my dad made. It has a measurement stick. Basically, you put your tube in here, whatever tube you're gonna use to cut, your stick comes up to here, and then you put your blank here. It will cut it, and then this will be the length of the tube. This is a fine tuning knob, and I adjusted it out as far as I wanted it to and it's going to give me that much more of an adjustment so that I have my blank is going to be this much longer than the actual tube. Let's cut it. Where are my safety glasses? From here I need to find a center point of each blank so that I can drill through the center to keep as much of the blank as possible. So I'm just going to take a straight edge and go from corner to corner. That's my center. Now what I like to do from here is I take my awl and my 1950s hammer and I like to make a little indentation here for something for my drill bit to follow. Little dent. That's all it takes. Now on to the drill press. For this pen, we have two different tubes. They're two different lengths and they're two different diameters. For the longer tube, it's a 10 and a half millimeter. For the shorter tube, it's a 12 and a half millimeter. So I have my Wood River 10 and a half millimeter right here. As you can see, it's a Brad point. And I have my 12 and a half millimeter from Wood River. And it's a Brad point. You wanna take your time. You wanna go slow. Don't get in a hurry. One, this is resin. It's cast. If you go too fast, it's gonna get hot, squishy, blow out, no telling what. You also wanna use a backer plate for this to rest on to help minimize any blowout. I have two different types of holders for my blanks. I have this one that's adjustable and it can use all varieties of different things. And this one's really good for round and big ones, little ones. I like it, but I don't need it for this application. This is one my dad made. It just has the cutout for the blank to go in here. I'm gonna slide the blank all the way in, down so that it rests on the bottom of this piece of wood. And I'm gonna tighten up that little wing nut just enough so that when I squeeze this, it applies enough pressure that it doesn't turn and then I'm going to drill. First, I'm gonna put my 10 and a half in, put it in there. I'm going to test and make sure it'll go past my block. It does. I'm going to turn it on and make sure it's straight. No wobble. Now, get my tubes out of the way. I'm going to do the long one first. Get it in, all the way down to the bottom. Flat, tighten this up. Turn that on, and I'm gonna bring this down so that the tip of my brad point goes into here. That will help guide it into the center of the blank and then drill straight down. When I see the wood shavings, I know I've gone all the way through. And there's our hole. Now 
Now, as you can see, it's a little bit off center, but that's okay because all of this is going away. We're making it round. These tubes are smooth. I need to rough them up. I just use a small piece of 120 grit. If you don't rough up your tubes, your epoxy is not gonna stick to the tube. So you rough up your tube to give that epoxy something to adhere to. It doesn't take a lot. There we go. All right, we came in the house. It's way too humid out there for this epoxy. I use JB Weld five minute epoxy. It's a two part epoxy. It has about a five minute working time. You mix it for 30 seconds, use it up. I let it sit overnight. So I'm gonna glue my tubes that I've already sanded into my blanks. Equal parts of the A and the B. All right, and our blanks dried overnight. Now we're at the lathe. It's time to turn and make them round for the size for the pen that we're using. This is a Jet 12 by 21 lathe, which means it will turn something 12 inch diameter, and it will also turn something up to 21 inches without a bed extension. This side is your headstock. It's where the motor's at. This is your tailstock. The tailstock moves. It will not turn on its own. This is a pen turning mandrel. Basically, it's a number two mortise mandrel that fits inside the headstock with a shaft that's about a quarter inch diameter, and it's about eight inches long. This piece right here that turns on its own is called a mandrel saber. You want that to go on the end of here, because if you don't, when your lathe is turning and you're pushing on it, you're gonna push on this without anything on here, it's gonna bend, and it's gonna go flying, and it's gonna hurt. Don't ever make it too tight. I'll show you what I mean when I put my blanks on here. Let's get started. Now, one thing I do use, these are little spacers. This one comes with the mandrel. I only use one. This is an old bushing, and I just use it as spacers to get further away from the ends of my mandrels and my mandrel saver to give me more room to cut. Our blanks are glued up, but I have some residual epoxy in here that I need to cut out because if I don't, my bushings aren't going to fit in here correctly, and I'm not going to be able to turn it. So I'm going to cut that out now. All the glue's out, so now my bushings will go on there. I have to hand it to Turner's Warehouse. When I got these bushings, they used to come in just a little Ziploc bag. Now they come in this nice little case. It's labeled. I use my bushings. I put them back in here, and I have somewhere to store my bushings, and I know what pen kits they're for. It's kind of nice. Thank you, Turner's. Now these bushings are two different sizes. You can see this inside diameter shaft is smaller than this one. That is because our tubes are two different sizes. Some people turn their two part pens together. I'm gonna turn them one at a time because they are two different sizes. I'm gonna do the cap first. So I have my spacer, bushing for this top, my blank. The other bushing, spacer. I slide my tailstock over. Till it stops. Locking handle down, give it a little turn, don't make it too tight, that's good, and lock this down. Now I'm ready to turn. This is the chisel I'm using, round chisel, homemade handle with the shaft here. My tool rest. Slide this over and I get it as close as I want it. Some people get cold really close, some people don't. I like to be about right here. And I'm gonna make this tool rest parallel to the piece I'm cutting. Lock it in. Tool rest because you're resting your tool on it. You want your tool to rest about center of the shaft. You want it cutting like that. And you don't want to cut with it like this, and you don't want to cut with it like that. You want it straight so that the chisel does the cutting, and you're just going to go back and forth, nice, even motion. As this is resin and something special, I need to take my time, and I'm going to go very slow. This is the controller for the variable speed on off. I have it turned all the way down. So right now it's turning at around 173, 174 RPM, revolutions per minute. It will go all the way up to about 3650. That's a little fast. I'm not going to turn that fast. I'm going to turn this one at about 2800, and that's what I'm going to cut at. When you're cutting, you're using this finger underneath, hold with your thumb, and I'm going back and forth on the tool rest, and I'm just rocking. I'm just rocking. I don't want to do this because it's going to make my arms go like this while I'm cutting, and I don't want to do that. I just keep my arms locked in, and I go back and forth, and that tool guide will help keep this nice and straight. When I want to do a bevel, then I start from my sides, and you'll see what, I talk, what I'm talking about when I start cutting. Safety glasses, protect your eyes. You can also wear a face shield, it's up to you.
Now I'm going to do the bottom half of the end. All right, now I need to square off my blanks with the tube. You can see that the tube is still inside the blank a little bit, and I'm gonna square off both ends. What that does is it makes sure that the ends of the blank will be square with the pen, and it also makes it the right length for the pen kit. So in order to do that, I need to get my tool rest out of the way. I need to take off my mandrel saver. My drill chuck goes in the tailstock end. This is a special jig that makes it square with the pen itself. Take off my pen mandrel, threads, threads, sanding pad, screws on the headstock. These are perpendicular to each other. That will square it off. So punch pin. For this part, I turn my lathe down to about 15, 1600, and I only want to take it to the tube anymore. And my pen, my parts will be too short. So I'm almost there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little bit more so that I can see shiny, shiny on the end of the brass tube. Nice and shiny right there on the end, that's it. If I go any more, my tube's gonna be too short. Now I gotta do the other side. When you're doing this, you don't wanna put a lot of pressure on it, you're just, Lightly sanding, put it on, take it off. Again, you don't want to overheat it, <laughs> just like in drilling. Now that side is done. Now that the ends are square with the tube, I can shape my cap. I'm gonna get it as close to these bushings as I can. I'll give it a little bit of a bevel, not much, and then we'll go to the bottom. When you're shaping your blank for your final shape, make sure you have an idea of what you want your final shape to be. People do some intricate work with their pen blanks. I like to start and get it close like I did here, and then start working on my bevel for the ends, and then I can bring my center to my bevel. Some people just do it all at one time. Some people make it big and bulbous and do all kinds of crazy stuff. I keep it simple. And remember, the closer you get to your tube, the bigger the chance you have of blowing it out and destroying all your hard work. And in some cases with acrylics, the bigger the chance you have of seeing your actual tube. If you don't want to, keep it blank a little bit fat. But you also have to remember if you want your customers to use it, if it's too fat, it's gonna be uncomfortable. If they're just gonna be show pieces, that's a little different. And don't get discouraged if both sides aren't the same. That's what makes the pens unique. They're handmade. It's not done by a computer. It's not supposed to be the same. Stay tuned, Ted. Got something for ya. From the suggestion of Ted Waddell, my sacrificial bushings for my sanding and finishing. One plastic bushing. Well, those slide on, slide on nice. One blank, one sacrificial bushing, my spacer. Now the key here is when I cut these, when I use my chisel, I only got it close to my bushing. I'm gonna have to use my caliper to know the diameter here so I can make sure the ends are as close as possible. Otherwise, it's not gonna fit properly on my pen. Put this in millimeters, 14.4. Four. Currently a 15.17, so I don't have to take a lot off. First thing I'm gonna do is sand. I'm just using 180 grit sandpaper with a backer board. This helps keep it flat. And I'm also gonna turn my lathe down to about 1300. Now you see those white lines? That white line, that white line, that white line. That means it's not flat. Those are the high spots. I need to get it down to all the spots so that it feels comfortable in your hand. You watch for those spots to go away. That dark spot, that dark spot, that needs to go away. Here we go. Starting to go away. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. I don't want to destroy my blank. Now I'm going to do my ends. Again, don't get it hot. You're just trying to smooth it out. Now I need to check. See how close I am. Ooh, I got a millimeter to go. 
Remember, you can always take more off. If you take too much off, you can't put it back. All right, I'm at 14.49, that's perfect because I still have more sanding to do. So I'm not gonna get it exact because sanding's gonna take off more. So check this end, 14.8. 14.5, pretty close. All right, so I sanded with the 180. Now you can see these lines, these cross lines. I like to go this way and get rid of these lines real lightly. And I'm just gonna try to get rid of these cross lines, not putting a lot of pressure. Now I'm using 320. Same thing, not as long, just giving it a nice good sanding. And this should get us closer to the bushing size we need. Now we have been planning this pen for months. So I myself am pretty excited to see what it's gonna turn out like when we're finished. So I hope you join us for that big reveal. So close. So I'm checking with the, with the bushings to see it is right on there and that is perfect. So we're good there. I do not need to take any more off diameter wise. I do need to finish cleaning it up though. Let's get some more sanding done. Cross lines, gotta get rid of the cross lines. If you enjoy what you're watching and you're getting any value out of it, please subscribe. I'm gonna wipe that off. Don't get all crazy in here with the rag. The rag gets caught up in your headstock. It's gonna rip your finger off. Be careful. This is a foam pad. It's between 500, 600 grit. Light pressure. And this one's about 1500. All right, now the fun part. Time to clean and get some protective coat on there. This is just a paper towel with denatured alcohol. I wanna get as much dust out of there as I can. If you leave dust particles in here before you put your CA finish on it, it's gonna turn white and your pen is gonna look terrible. Now normally with in a resin or epoxy or an acrylic blank, you don't need to put CA on it. However, this has another material in it and it needs to be sealed. I'm gonna turn my lathe down to about 600 because I don't wanna fling CA glue everywhere. This is it. Mercury adhesive, thin. I'm using a thin flex. I'm gonna put about three coats of thin on there. And this is just a shop towel that I folded up and cut. And this is accelerator, one squirt. The accelerator makes the glue dry faster. I'm gonna check it to see if I have any white spots. Ooh, you think that's shiny? Not even close yet. Now I'm gonna put some coats of medium, same brand. So I'm doing three coats of medium. That should be plenty. That one's done. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit before I do my final steps. And I'm going to work on the bottom half. That step is finished. Now the final steps. We're going to polish this to make it shine even better. Now the first part of that is going to be sanding what I just put on. Sounds counterintuitive. However, this is still kind of rough. So we're gonna use Abernet, this stuff goes from 180 to 400. We just want to doll it up and make it even. So back up to 1300, start with 180, doll it up, barely touching it. At the end, I don't want to take the finish off. I just want to smooth it out. I'm going to get a little bit of these lines out, very light touch. 220, 240. I'm not doing the cross lines now, I'm going to do it on the last one. I did it on the first one with the most coarse, and then I'll do it on the last one with the very fine. 320. And now 400. Again, I'm just trying to smooth out the CA finish. Now, the fun part. This is micro mesh. 400, 12,000. Wet sanding. So I'm going to cover my lathe, because I don't want water on the bed. I'm gonna crank this puppy up to about 1800. Start with the 400. You see how that water starts flinging off? When that water starts flinging off, that means you're done with that grit. I'm giving a little extra because I want to make sure all those cross lines are gone. And now I'm going to check it. We don't want to see a lot of cross lines. Got a couple. Let's see what we do.
Now, I'm gonna go one step further and use Zona. This is the same as the uh, as the um, micro mesh, but it's only a six step process. You don't have to do this after you've done the micro mesh. I just prefer to because I like the finish this gives. This Zona at the end just makes it really, really shine. And again, it's wet sanding, not putting a lot of pressure. Look at that shiny, shiny. I'm going to apply some glass polish. You can use whatever you want. I use glass polish. Some Renaissance wax. Not a lot, just a little bit. This gives it a higher polish and it protects on against fingerprints. Now that is shiny. All right, so you have seen these two finished. Now it's time to put it together for that big reveal, you Florida fans. We're gonna put our parts together so that we can keep this jawbone line together. Before I assemble anything, I always take a piece of 600 grit wet dry sandpaper and I just sand the ends lightly just to get any residual glue off of there and make sure it's nice and flat. Don't push real hard, just wanna smooth it out. So the kit will seal nice and flat to the blank. And here's our kit. We have our roller ball ink cartridge. That's our clip, that's our finial with the spring that goes on the body this is for the tip and the cap it's the center ring this is the beauty ring that goes on the bottom of the cap this is our tip and this is our end cap for the cap let me move this out of the way i'm going to bring my pen press in here so we have our end cap and our clip it goes just like that we're going to pick a spot on our cap that doesn't take away from this line detail that we want to keep so i'm going to put it here of the major portion of the bone Remember, this part needs to line up with this part. So I want the end cap on the side. We'll get it started. Nice neoprene stopper there. And I'm gonna put this little block of wood here to help protect my blank. Make sure that's pretty much in the center of the white. Just give it a little press. Don't push too hard, just enough so that that clip doesn't move. See how it's not turning? Don't wanna crack the finish of my pen. That part's done. Now, since we have that, we might as well put our beauty ring on our cap. This goes in here and press. Not too hard, you don't wanna crack your finish. So our cap is done. Now, we need to line these two up and make sure that when it's together, because it screws together, that they line up. The easiest way to do that, grab this piece, get it set. Don't press it in yet, screw it in. Now, we line this up here. What I'm gonna do, this turns like a normal screw and I'm gonna make it a little bit off center like that, press it in and now I'm gonna turn it so that my cap stays tight and I'm gonna turn it till it's lined up. Right about there. All right, lined up, take this off and now I'm gonna press this together. I don't wanna press it all together at one time because I don't wanna mess up my threads. And we'll press this together. Let's check it. Look at that, nice even line comes together. Now we need to put our finial on there. That's your spring. Don't lose your spring. Your pen will not work without the spring. And press this together. I don't need this anymore so I can get my press out of the way. All right, we got our spring. It's gonna go down in here. It's gonna go this way, fat end up. Drop it in, drop your ink in. Good, take the cap off, take your tip, screw it on. Good to go. Let's test it out. Works perfect. So there you are, Gator fans. Our Gator Jaw Bone cast in blue and orange resin. What a beautiful pen. It's numbers time. The cost of our shop tools and our supplies are at a zero. Now this pen is a little different. Working hand in hand with this artisan to create this one of a kind blank was $35. Taking into account my time and the other materials to create this pen, we're looking at another $80. That puts our total cost at $115. I'm going to list this pen for $155. Once we sell it, that will give us a profit of $40 to put towards our 2021 financial goals. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.